Hey, this is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Today we are working on our third video on intersection observers. And the very first video, we did this uh, nav bar here that is transparent. When you get to this white section, it's going to turn white. And the second video, as I scroll down just a little bit more, these cards are going to pop in right here. And you'll see that nav bar now turn once I reach the white section here. And now on this third video, we're going to work on this terms and conditions section. So you've maybe had to build out a site like this, or you've been to a site like this where they've got these terms that you've got to read, and you want to prevent them from clicking, I agree, until they've actually read the whole section. And you can do that with something called an intersection observer. Uh, I'm going to try to be fairly brief on how it works since I've already gone over that in the last two videos, especially that first video explaining a little bit more of the details there. Uh, looking at the actual MDM docs, all that. But uh, if you come in here, what we've got is a few kind of extra things. If they click I agree before they've read it, we've got this little pop-up that shows. And then as they scroll, they finally get to the bottom. Not only does it uh, show as visible, but it also allows you to, um, it automatically selects that button, focuses on it so that they can just hit the space bar and agree. All right, so with that as kind of our intro, let's build this thing out. Once again, I've got parcel running on the, in this directory, and it is watching this index.html page. And uh, we're just going to work on this bottom section here. Now, I didn't. Uh, I already built out all the HTML. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. It's just a, a card, basically, um, and the CSS. The one thing I didn't do yet, um, because I want to do it here live, is work on this accept message. If you try to click agree ahead of time, you might remember there's a little button that pops up or a little message that pops up that basically says, please read before uh, first before agreeing. And so I, I want to actually style that live here. Um, and I have it inside the same container as the button itself. And we're going to use absolute positioning to get it in the right spot. So I'll come over here and I'm trying to see if there's anything else that's that difficult or different. Um, I don't think so here. I'm just using SCSS variables. And you may not know this, but you don't have to figure out what the RGBA is for something if you want to make it slightly, you know, opacity, whatever. These are just hex codes, these primary colors. But uh, SCSS natively uh, can take RGBA and turn it into, or hex and turn it into RGBA just by pretending that this is RGBA. Uh, it'll do that for you. Uh, so that's one thing that's kind of cool, I guess. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. We're, we are going to trigger this button accepting uh, by uh, a class called enabled in JavaScript. And then uh, since I went ahead and removed all the default styling for the button, um, you definitely want to add back in an outline at least and some other stuff. So uh, I did that for focus, for the focus state. Okay, I think that's mostly it. Let's go ahead and work on uh, the actual... Uh, yeah, that message, uh, read first before agreeing. So I'll come in here, and this is within that button container, and I'll just do button message. That's what it was called in our markup. Let me pull this up so we can actually see what we're doing here. And again, I mentioned we're going to do position absolute. And we've got, on this container, we've got a position relative. So we're going to be absolute inside that relative container, or in reference to it. And you'll see there automatically when I save, it kind of jumps to the middle of it. Okay, now we need to do a few things. Remember, there was that dark background. So the background color is going to be our primary color. And then the color of the text will be our light color. For padding, we'll do 1 rem and 1.5 rem. And then let's go ahead and save it. And you see it shows right there over the button. Now we want to position it above the button. And so let's go ahead and move it top negative 65 pixels seem to be about right and we're going to right now let's see what else we should do um let me go ahead and work on that after element which is that little arrow that shows down so you can come in here and do an after and we'll do again i guess let's first add it as add some content and we're going to do a position absolute And we're going to do a width of zero. And then we'll do left 50%, which will move it halfway over uh, in this kind of container here. Now, before I do too much more, let's go ahead and actually create the arrow so we can see what's actually happening here. 
Um, so we, we want it to be a width of zero because we're going to make the entire thing out of borders. So there's this little hack you can do where you can add borders and create a triangle. So we'll do a left border of 15 pixels transparent, a right border, the same thing. And then finally, we'll do a top border of, if I can remember what my variables names variable names are, a top border of 15 pixels. You may have noticed when I saved, it shows up right over this way. Let's go ahead and move it so we can actually see what's going on here. So we'll go bottom uh, negative 15 pixels. So you see it shows up right there. Now, you may be like, whoa, that's not exactly in the middle. Well, we did 50% left, which means the corner here is directly in the middle. So now what we need to do is run a transform, translate x, its own width 50% back the other way. So we'll come in here and say transform, translate x negative 50%. All right, and now that should move it right over to the middle. All right, now we also need to, um, actually, I don't, I don't think I need this width uh, anymore with that, uh, those borders on. I think I'd done that earlier, trying to figure out why something wasn't working, but I think we are good. Okay, so we've got that position where we need it to be. Let's go ahead and do a couple other things. So we don't want it to show originally. So we will eventually come in here and do an opacity of zero and a pointer um, events of none. We can't really do anything with these pointer events anyhow right now. It's not like you can click on this, but your cursor will turn. And so if it's just set to opacity zero and this isn't exactly over the text, somebody could come in here and essentially get that cursor over thin air and wonder what's going on. So we'll just set that to pointer events none. Opacity zero, I'm gonna go ahead and comment that out so that when I save, it, it doesn't uh, you know <laughs> fade away here. Um, now, I wanna do a couple other things. When we enable it, I wanna actually have it slide up and then slide back down when it's done. So let's start it a little lower than it otherwise uh, would be. Now, we can just change this top value here. So that's one thing we can do. So maybe let's come in here, we could say like uh, 45, and then we could come down to an enabled class and say something like, oh, I don't know. What was that? Top 65, I think. Something like that. So I could come in here and inspect this and we can kind of preview what it'll look like. Nope, oh, not in the terms, the button container. Preview what it'll, it'll look like here by just adding in that enabled class and you can see it kind of switches back and forth there. Now we don't have any kind of transition on it, so it's a little rough. So that's one way we could do it. We could also do a translate, um, you know, Y and kind of move it up and down that way. But since this is working, let's just keep it here. And I'll do translation or trans transition. There we go. All, let's do like 250 milliseconds, ease in and out. And now if I come in here, we'll do the same thing. Enabled, and then I'm gonna hit tab. And there we go, it slides up. Okay, so that's that works well enough for me. We'll go ahead and turn this opacity back on. Um, and then when we come down here, we'll need to do opacity of one. Okay, I think that should be it for the CSS. And when I save this here and if refresh, get rid of that enabled, you see it pulls away. We're going to add this enabled class and it'll pull up and then we'll remove it as well with JavaScript. All right, so we've got the CSS done that we're gonna to do today. Let's now focus our the rest of our time on JavaScript itself. So when we come in here, we're gonna grab several things. We'll have our uh, query selectors first. Then we are going to, down here, we'll go ahead and do our uh, observer. That observer, you might remember for the last from the last few videos, takes a callback function and it takes uh, options. So we will do those as well. And then we do need to have some kind of event listener for this button um, that if you're still at the top of the page and it, it's not enabled, it's not active, that when you click it, that little thing pops up and then folds away. So we'll do uh, an event listener for that. And then I suppose we need to actually call um, the observer as well. Okay, so that's a decent amount of things here, but let's tick them off kind of one after the other. First thing we need to do is uh, grab our constant here. We're gonna call it the last terms element. All right, the last element in that terms uh, section here, that terms card. For this, 
we need to do a query selector and we're going to go ahead and grab terms which is the um, this div here with all these paragraphs and stuff in it we're gonna grab terms and then we're gonna say hey we want the last uh, last child of these of these P elements these paragraph elements so the very last paragraph we're gonna call that as our last term element and if I come in here and we console log this you'll see that that's the the right paragraph we're grabbing the right one and that may, way if they if you come in here and add extra text it'll always just grab the last one and hopefully will prevent your JavaScript from breaking okay let's come down here and the next thing we need to grab one other thing we need to grab that accept button and I think we just called it strangely enough button accept and that should grab this actual button we're going to reference those in a bunch of these things down here so that's why I'm grabbing them up front so we can use them uh, throughout let's go ahead and write the terms observer observer first so we'll come in here and say const uh, terms observer is what we'll call it and we'll say new intersection observer and remember it takes two things it takes this callback function and these options so we'll say terms observer callback all right we can name that whatever we want but I don't know I feel like it's easier just to keep them all together keep them all saying the same basic thing we'll come in here and say terms observer options and then let's go ahead and break these out so we'll say const and you could also write this as a traditional function if you want but we will um, come up here and kind of fill this out in a moment let's go ahead and add the options for these options right now we're just going to leave them blank we will add one thing to our options here in a moment all right so when we save this this new observer is not going to work yet <laughs> this is throwing an error at us because we're not done yet calm down man all right here we go um, let's go ahead and uh, just kind of talk through what's going to happen here so we've got this observer that we're going to call eventually and in fact let's just write that quickly so we'll say terms observer that's this dot observe so we're actually calling the observer here and then we're going to tell it what to observe it's going to observe the last element when it can see this that's when it's supposed to fire so when this is visible it will call this intersection observer this intersection observer will take two things first this function up here that we have yet to write and then it can be altered by these options this object options object here so we'll come back in here and look at this callback function now now the callback function needs to also take two things it needs to take some kind of something to watch and then it needs to take terms observer itself so it actually references the observer and the observer uh, through this uh, call references it so there's kind of this back and forth between the two so this is our item to watch all right name it whatever you want I guess we could call it last paragraph yeah whatever you want you can call it whatever you want the point is you're passing something in it's this uh, right here is what you're passing in so we'll come in here and what we need to do is we need to figure out if this final paragraph is intersecting uh, now I went over this a couple of videos ago and then I think last video as well but let's go ahead and just kind of walk through what we're looking at so we'll console log and we're gonna say that last P element which is whatever gets passed in here which we just I just told you it's gonna be this last paragraph so last terms element will get passed in and now we're just referencing whatever was passed in here we want that and let's go ahead and just console log that and see what that gives us here so it's going to give us this intersection observer entry inside here this little this array here we we're looking for this is intersecting in other words is it intersecting with the viewport and as we move here it's going to eventually switch over um, and now it's saying is intersecting oh I grabbed the wrong one <laughs> the second one um, is intersecting true all right so once it's visible it should say is intersecting is true so let's go ahead and kind of reference that so we'll say hey we want the zero index of that array you're gonna pull up and we want the is intersecting so now it'll say false you come down here and it says true we f pull away from the screen it'll say false again true false true false true okay so what we need to know is is that intersecting so we can write it an if statement here we can just say if that is intersecting then 
what do we want to do? Well, we want that accept button to add the class enabled. So we'll say accept button dot class list dot add enabled. So now if we come in here and we start to scroll, scroll, it's visible, it's now enabled. Now the thing is, it's still actually observing. In fact, if we were to come in here and once again grab this is intersecting and let's console log it here. I think this should work. We come down here. True. 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 So it's still intersecting. Um, and if we put it outside, it would be telling us when it was false too. So what we need to do is stop the intersector, uh, intersection observer now. So we'll come and grab our observer and we'll say unobserve. And then we want to tell it what to unobserve. That's the last terms element. So now if we come in here, and I probably should not have removed that console log, but I come in here and I say console log, last observer. Now when I come in here and I start to scroll, it's going to say true, but not anymore. All right, so just that first time is all it does because it's now stopped observing. Now there was one other thing we wanted to do, and that was to go ahead and focus on this button so that as you're scrolling through this with your mouse, you can just then click the spacebar, which is default for the button anyhow, and it should accept that. So we'll come in here and say accept button and say focus. And that just adds the focus on it. So we come down here, it adds that focus, and as you can see, our CSS styling is showing up there. All right, so there's one other thing we want to do, which is when they come down, if you noticed, I've been scrolling pretty fast, but if you come down here and they just barely look at it, they haven't really seen the whole thing. So I want to wait till they, the entire paragraph is in view. And we can do that with something called the threshold. So we'll come in here and say threshold. And zero means just the smallest little bit, that default, that's the default. Just this much would be all it takes to trigger this button. 50%, 0.5, it means it has to be half of that last paragraph has to be visible. One means the entire thing has to be visible. And that's what we want. So I'll come in here. And then come down here, scroll, scroll, scroll. And notice, even when it comes into the viewport, it doesn't trigger. There I am going too fast again. It doesn't trigger until I get the entire thing in the viewport. Now, if you've got a large paragraph here, you may need to be uh, a little careful. If your last paragraph is so big that it won't ever show completely on the screen, it'll never trigger. So um, you may want to do something like 0.5 or something like that. And uh, assuming you're not going to have a paragraph that's super long as your last item here. You could also add like a, a span or something like that and then just change this to span and always have it as the last thing in there. Um, that's probably safer overall, but suffice it to say, uh, that's what the threshold does. So we'll set it to one. We know the size of our paragraph right now and we're all good to go. Now there's one other thing we wanted to add and that was when we come in here and click prematurely, maybe you've been... Uh, in a site like this and you're trying to agree to something and you're like, why isn't this working? And, you know, maybe if you're used to these kinds of things, you'll scroll down and then realize, oh, I had to read it first. But wouldn't it be nice to communicate that to those who are on our site? So that's where we, were, where we will write this uh, event listener. So we've got that accept button that we pulled up above and let's add an event listener to it. The event listener will be a click and we're going to write a function and take the event in here. Now, what we need to figure out is basically if the target of our click has the class enabled. Enabled would mean that it's visible now and they can click on it. If it does have enabled, we don't want to do anything. And uh, if it doesn't have enabled, then we want to show that message. So let's go ahead and just see if we can console log here. And we're going to say when we click, we want to see the e.target. The thing we clicked on, the target we clicked on. Oh, I forgot to move that parenthesis around the right direction. There we go. Okay, so if I come in here and click, I should see that button, the entire button. So that's the e.target. So what I want to see is I want to say, okay, that e.target, I want to figure out the class list that is contained there. So we'll come in here and say class list dot contains, and then we're going to say enabled. So I want to see if it contains enabled. So if I click here, it says false. It does not contain enabled. Let's come down here, click true. It does contain enabled. 
All right, so what I want to see is if it doesn't contain that. So let's throw a bang on the front of this. And this essentially turns it into this kind of Boolean. Does it contain yes or no? Um, that's what this contains does kind of already. This says, I only want to know if it doesn't contain it. So that's what we're going to use to write our if statement. So let's come in here and say if it does, I guess I didn't need to erase that parentheses. If it does not contain enabled, we want to do something. Well, what do we want to do? We want to say, let's grab that const, let's grab that button message as a const in here. That button message is that uh, little pop-up we had. That button message, we want to say uh, query selector button message, I think is what it was called. And then we're going to say, let's add a class to that button message. Class list dot add. And you might remember it was visible. That's what we created. So let's go ahead and come down here and we'll say if it's not, we're going to click this. Hmm. Visible, is that what we called it? Enabled. This should be visible, I think. Let's try again. Where's my JavaScript? Okay, let's try clicking again. There we go, it pops up. Now we don't want it to stay there for eternity, so we need to find a way to trigger it uh, to be removed here. So the easiest way to do that is to add a timeout. So we'll come down here and we'll say set timeout. And this timeout is gonna do two things. It'll take a function, and then it will take a number of milliseconds. So if we say like 1500 milliseconds, that's one and a half seconds. So if we come in here and we're it's screaming at us because there's no function yet and I saved it prematurely, but we can write a function and just for clarity's sake, I'll drop this down to another line. All we're gonna do is a button message class list dot remove and we'll, we wanna remove visible. So now we come in here, we click, pulls up and then fades away. And you can change this to something a little longer. I just don't want it to be so long that if they click and then they realize they need to read and they start reading and it's in their way and, you know, that's more frustrating. But now they know and then it fades away. That's a little long for me. Let's say uh, two seconds, something like that. Pulls up and then it fades away. Then they keep reading. They try again. Doesn't work. Finally, they come down here and now they can click agree or hit the space bar. So hopefully that was a fun project for you. If you like these kinds of things, please subscribe. Uh, that'll be a big help to me and the channel. And uh, hit the like button, and that helps people on YouTube see it. And uh, yeah, so thanks so much for following me and for watching. Happy coding.